So I want to point out first that even if you are a very conservative economist, there are macro alternatives to the austerity. And, and, and talk about what they are. Some of them, people in Europe, like some people in Europe like say, oh no, I can't even think about that. Well, break up the Eurozone to allow devaluation of the, of the currencies. In America, that is, among economists, that is a, let's say, probably the thing most people who know something about Europe would check. And so they're very, very well distinguished colleagues of mine who would say that's the thing to do. You got a currency zone. We would never have a currency zone even with Canada. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just, it doesn't work. Then there is an interesting plan. It's, it's, uh, by, uh, it's been really pushed by a, co a colleague in my department. I'll talk a little bit about hers, which is this fiscal devaluation. You're not allowed to devalue your currency. You don't want to leave the euro. You can do some tax things that get you an equivalent solution. And I'll talk about that a little bit of how that goes. But it means there are other things to do. That's the key thing. And then the other problem that Europe has is the huge debt ratios, particularly of households. So you have to go deleverage your, your household debts. The Americans uh, have done a pretty good job of, of doing that. But the standard way everybody would say that you want to do that is you want to have some inflation to help the, 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 the debtors. And the creditors suffer. But, uh, but, uh, but there, there's no, there was no guarantee made to people who loan money that the inflation rate was going to be locked in forever at a very low rate. So you can have some of that. And then obviously you can restructure. There are four policy alternatives discussed. Um, break up the Eurozone, this is a, uh, a little, I'm not endorsing any of these, I'm just going to tell you what they are just to say, hey, there are alternatives that you can think about macro policy. So there's a broken Euro, and uh, I just looked a little bit at what happened when Ireland broke their exchange parity with the UK pound and joined the Euro, and it's not clear that all these things have to be done, there's great cost to them, but I'm not an expert in that, I'm just laying that out is something you, you and I assume in, in, in Greece and, and uh, there must be people seriously thinking, uh, how, how can we do this? What will be the cost? Is there a way to do it? The fiscal devaluation you, 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 you may or may not have heard about. The French government, uh, Hollande, has been very, uh, has uh, sort of adopted this as, as, a, as a policy. And at the bottom it says, it's been proposed for different Euro European countries. And it's something that unions should pay attention to. Uh, um, it, it's basically a plan for a country that is having a trade balance problems. It is not intrinsically a plan for recovering uh, from a recession. But the trade balance, the, and the notion is you lower the payroll taxes that the firms pay, which then reduces cost of labor. And that makes the goods produced in your country cheaper than the goods produced overseas. So your consumers in your country will stop buying exports, and the people in the other country will start buying your goods. And that gives some stimulus to the economy. Now, they, they cover this, however, they, they include with this, is you also include, you increase the VAT. So you maintain your balance, of your, your government, of your fiscal balance in, some, in that sense. Um, so I'm lowering one set of taxes. I'm raising the other one. Corporations pay less on the payroll. Consumers pay more on the VAT. And the paying on, on, on the VAT also can, can help with, the, with, this, with this recovery. It does cause some inflation in your country. And so it's, it's, it's originally proposed, in fact, it goes, the idea goes back to Keynes, but it's originally proposed by a Swedish economist, Lars Kalmfors, in 1998. And then my, my colleagues at Harvard uh, have been pushing this as a, as a viable uh, scheme. And the, the picture up there is the uh, professor at Harvard. Oops, should get this back. Go back, she can see her picture. Um, she's been the real, the real thinker doing a lot of very complicated economic analyses to show when this works and when it doesn't, and sold it to, to Mr. Hollande. So th there's an alternative there. 
Does it work? Um, the IMF uh, did something saying it would work. Um, there's some other studies that say it'll work a little bit, shifting the foreign trade. So if, if you, you're getting a stimulus to your economy from more exports, basically, and, and, and less imports. And I thought, oh, that looks, you know, it's a plausible strategy. Unions got to worry about the change from the, the, the payroll tax going down. You got to make sure the corporations really lower the price of the goods, um, et cetera. And, and then, but then the, the, the Dutch Bureau of Economic Policy Analysis just came out with a report which gave me a little more concern because they said it's not going to do very much at all on trade, make it a little bit worse, but actually it'll stimulate the, 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 the employment. So if you've got sets of models that are giving you somewhat different pictures of what this is going to do, you got to be very careful. That's, uh, that's all I can say. The, the, the Dutch results are more, I was m more surprised about, but they've done, the Dutch are very good in doing these econometric studies, and so one has to look. That's all I can say. And then I just said, there are problems with this. Portugal tried to do this, and were, it, spit, it blew up in the Portuguese government's face because people said, wait a minute, the distributional consequences of increased a tax on consumers through the higher VAT and, a, and lower employer social security contributions looked like a giveaway to companies. And uh, that all depends on whether, whether the companies lower their prices, uh, which then might create more demand. And in any case, it got stopped. And then the Portuguese government said, oh, well, we really, let's just cut the employer contribution and we'll increase the worker contribution. Which is a totally, uh, sort of gives you a flavor of what that government probably was thinking all along. Let's just do some redistribution to the rich. Um, and it, it's got no place. Um, and then there's a set of criticisms of this, 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 this fiscal devaluation plan having to do with where labor share of costs are higher or lower. I don't want the details of that. It's just, it's, 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 it's an alternative. It's an alternative that some economists and some simulations and things, and the French government has endorsed. Um, and, and so it's worth thinking about in a serious way. It's an, it, and with, and I'm, I've made no judgment, to, to be honest. I was impressed with the first set of IMF studies. Then I saw the Dutch study. And you, you just got to look at it very, very, I put details, details, details. Look at it very carefully to think what unions should think about this. The next two of these quote alternatives, uh, I, I just together because I'm not going to say too much about them, is that inflation is good for the debtor. And the IMF, and did I, I got 2013 now down correctly, uh, it, 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 it's, it's they just pointed out that the way you get yourself out of debt problems, and they're talking about household deleveraging, but it's any kind of debt, is you have some inflation. Inflation helps the debtor. And if you're trying to get people's debt down, inflation is good. Um, and they say that the macroeconomic context this time will be more challenging, which basically is a nice way of saying if Europe is going to put low inflation first, they're making it much harder to, to do lots of other things that are necessary to, to get out of the recession. And for debt restructuring, the one I know the best is Argentina. And Argentina, just a few days ago, is in the US courts, and it'll go to the Supreme Court. And the, you know, they just absconded on part of their debt. And, 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 and um, the, the cry for us thing is, of course, the Evita, but the cry is for people who owned the debt. And there was a lot of Argentinians, but a lot of Europeans. The US actually was not unfavorable to their actions, because the US was not a major owner of, of the Argentine debt. But I don't think that's, that's a, some sort of a last resort thing that you do in a, in a true disaster. But it's a policy. It's a policy that you, you can do. OK. So I said, well, how should unions think about these solutions? Well, some cases, they may be trading off some short-term gain of jobs, possibly with the fiscal devaluation. Um, but then you, have, you may never get the payroll tax back up. And if it's a long-term drop, suddenly that becomes a very different than if it's a short-term emergency drop. 
if it's going to be things that are going to increase inequality, there's got to be some compensating deal struck. There's a lot of risk. And I just thought one should think about these things. One should have uh, some sort of policy things where you say, well, under these conditions, this one might not be so bad. Under these conditions, it is, isn't. Um, I'm not going to be talking any more about them, just that there are alternatives that are being discussed in, in the economics uh, community, some in the U.S. and not here, some of which I say has gone to the, the fiscal devaluation to France. Um, and they, I don't know you, how much you know about them or how much you, you, but you ought to think about them and you know, decide when they look good or under what conditions they're tolerable, et cetera. Now, for my uh, po more positive solution, uh, and I, I called this, I said, it's workplace-based, it's micro, and it's built critically on the, the European Union social partner institution. All the other things are built upon uh, abstract, I don't mean abstract negatively, but general economic models where everything uh, just works without any serious discussion of institutions. This is going to be about institutions. So I, I called it a social partner investment plan. Uh, maybe we can get some better acronym for it. I, I didn't, didn't work on that. And I said it's Marshall style. Because if one is in this crisis and one has the austerity and one cannot stop the troika and the uh, uh, people from forcing contraction of the public sector, you've got to grow the private sector. And the people to do that will be the social partners uh, in this. So I said it's orthogonal to the battles over the uh, austerity and preserving the banks. Oops. Uh, and over the banks. And it's independent of the finance and political shenanigans. The shenanigans you know, is an Irish, I think it comes from Irish, but it means all the stuff that the politicians will do. And it's got four plans, four parts. Loans to firms or equity purchases in firms whose workers are willing to trade off some wage cuts or freezes, some sort of concessionary bargaining so that they get a stake in the future of the firm. So, and we'll explain this in more detail. It should be focused on the troubled economies, small and medium firms that need capital to modernize and invest and are not getting it from the banks. And then if, if the sectors and firms are, are targeted in a particular way, I think there's a greater chance that you actually recover the economy. And I'll tell you now all the deals. I put up front the one which, has, which says uh, workers have to trade something for this. And I'll explain why that is. And that's the one you have to think about, I suppose, in some detail. What can it do? Well, it, it, it can mimic this devaluation kind of process. Uh, because if workers are taking some cuts in pay, the labor cost is down. And you, you get whatever, whatever positive thing you get from that expanding uh, uh, demand for the products. But it can also do is ignite a self-sustaining recovery. And I'll explain how. And then we have a lot of evidence, micro workplace-based evidence for, for the, uh, Europe, the, U the US, UK, um, that when workers have some stake in the firm, you get better productivity. They, 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 they are, they, 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 if I'm paid with profit sharing, hey, I produce more. If I have ownership in the company, I do better. I always say the best case of that is John Lewis in the UK, which is the best supermarket in the world, uh, the, the best uh, store in the world. The Waitrose is their supermarket chain. And in the middle of the, the recession, they have been profitable every single year and have given large bonuses to the workers. So, and then it, it will reduce inequality. And then finally at the bottom, I said this is going to prove the long-term situation and take economic policy away from finance. Because as long as the economic policy is focused on, on the banks, what we're going to see is ultimately the banks will be, they'll be bailed out again. And all the money that, that goes to, to in, these, in these plans goes ultimately to the banks. And they are not doing their job of loaning and doing things to the small and medium enterprises. And then we did something like this in the US. Our, we have some employee stock ownership plans, but I want to talk about the, the bailout we did of our auto sector. Uh, 
which, by the way, was, was proposed by the Bush administration, conservative administration, that just saw that if this sector goes down, there's so many associated other jobs in the Midwest, this would have been an austerity program, not, not, not pushed onto the public sector, but pushed onto private industry that would have put us in the same state as Europe uh, or, 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 or worse. What happened? Workers took big cuts, way beyond what I would ever have thought they should have, but they did. Uh, they have now been getting their profit sharing back. So this is from February 2013. We'll see February 2014. The companies have now done even better this year. And so thousands of dollars went to, to the workers in bonuses. That's key to any plan where workers do some concessions. They have to get stake, and they can get it back. And you'll see in my plan it works. And then you say, well, US automobile sector, that's not so big. If I add up all of the jobs, the, these are not indirect jobs, really related directly to the automobile sector in the US, it's 3.1 million. Total employment in Portugal is 4.7 million. So you're talking a similar magnitude. This is a small scale, but it's not a small, you know, it's, 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 it's not peanuts. This is not a, a little company down the street. It's a big operation. Succeeded. By the way, the taxpayers have gotten our money back, too. So the whole thing worked. Uh, uh, uh. So now the question for how would we do this, a, a Marshall-type plan for Europe? Who has the money? Well, I made the list of the three places I took as first. European worker-related financial institutions, where there are private pension funds. Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. And then there's non-EU pension funds. Um, then I put some other places where one can tap money uh, that would be willing to put money into European enterprises that are likely to grow. And then the, the condition I put on is that the workers show that they believe the enterprises can grow by trading off some wages or wage increases for stakes in the company. So this is, the, it's not the payroll tax reduction you know, the, where the companies are not paying for, for something. It's the workers saying, we're going to take a risk because we think our company can recover if the economy gets better. And that to an outside investor, that's inside information that's very valuable. And I've talked to some big funds ab about that. So uh, to take this. So first question, one of my friends from the IMF, she said to me, um, are there really barriers to these investments? Is there really small and meat? She said, I think it's all demand. It's nothing to do with, uh, uh, with the fact that small and media enterprises cannot get loans. She said, so I'm going to send you some IMF documents, which she hadn't read. And so I, she sent me these documents, and I read them. And the documents said exactly the opposite of what she had said, uh, which the IMF, IMF officials often do not rely on their own research when they make pronouncements. She's an honest lady. She's been very helpful in this. Uh, but this was a great learning for her as well. So here again, again, I got the right uh, the 2013. The credit channel, this is about Europe. Credit channel broken. Small and medium enterprises, most affected. The monetary transmission in periphery and, and, and stressed markets remain impaired. And then they, the evidence they give, the different interest rates between Spain and Portugal and say, in, 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 in the, the, in, in, in say Germany. Uh, there's no longer as many flows across the borders inside the euro, uh, across the countries of banking. So euro has already segmented itself in some deep sense in the banking sector. The banks are already not part of the euro system. The German banks worry about the German Germany. They try to get things out and get repaid, from, et cetera. And uh, the periphery banks are now relying, they said, on deposits. That's terribly dangerous, because people can suddenly decide, get their money out of the, the things you want to rely on, 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 on more long-term capital. And so I put in bold. This is the word they use, fragmentation of financial markets. And so we, we really do have a, a, a problem, according to the IMF. And their recommendation then was exactly the opposite of what I, I'm trying to, whoops this back, oops, go back up, uh, is they recommended at the end of this was the IMF and the other people got to do more to support the banks. Well, it, it obviously would be good if Europe had a single financial 
market. It doesn't. It has fragmented markets. And the evidence is, is overwhelming when you look at it, they have. And then our, the plan that, that is meant not to give the money to the banks in the hope that the banks will give some of it to the small, to the small and medium enterprises. It's to sides, step aside these fragmented and, and, and I think very ineffective and inefficient banks who are looking only for one thing, to get their capital back and uh, money for the, in their pockets. So that's the, uh, that's, are there, yes, there are these barriers. Will a wage trade-off reduce worker spending? If I'm a worker and I agreed not to take a pay increase, let's say next year, that otherwise would be negotiated for me, or I even took a wage cut, that immediately says, oh my gosh, I have less money. Won't I reduce my spending? And that's negative in the process. Well, I said, in principle, I've gotten back enough promise of profit sharing or enough equity in the company that, in fact, I'm being made whole. And I, therefore, should not reduce my spending because my permanent income you know, is, is the same. That's in principle, and that's in my model. <laughs> but I'm not sure that that's right. Um, there are some other things about the wage concessions that also you have to be careful with. Uh, and I said at the bottom, if there are liquidity constraints on workers, knowing that I'm going to, I may that in, if the, if my if the economy recovers next year, or two years from now, I will be wealthy. Doesn't mean I can go out and spend today. So that has to be carefully thought out how that operates. That's all. I think. Um, is this too risky for private sector pensions? Uh, do you want, if you have a pension fund that's workers, do you want to put it into small and medium enterprises um, in, in a European economy um, and decide that, uh, gee, that's risking my workers' things. Maybe I should do something, quote, safer. Well, if this is done through mutual funds, we'll share the risk. And I think it's got to be done with a mixture of long-term investments, purchase of public infrastructure, at, which are pretty steady earners, and then, and I'll explain why, short-term cyclical investments. You want to do is put your money, you want the workers to get a share in companies that the minute the recovery starts, those companies begin booming. Because then you have a trigger for, for, for the, the recovery to continue. And I said the key thing in my discussions with some some of uh, financial characters, it is if the workers are willing to take a trade-off, that gives the better information that the company is likely to succeed, and that would be that becomes you're willing to, to do that. And then can the Wall Street monsters, uh, the Madoffs of the Wall Street, can they game this? Will they figure? Yeah, they'll try to figure out some way to rip everybody off. So you just have to keep your eyes open. Now, what about? Targets, who would you want to focus this on? So I made a list of three types of companies or sectors. You want some place is when GDP picks up a little bit. You get a big increase in sales. The sales increase generates large profits. That means the workers in that company have, have got their money back. And it means the outside investor, which would be the pension funds, has got its money back. So you, and, and we can identify cyclical sensitive uh, industries. You'd like it someplace where if we took a reduction of uh, if labor costs went down, you wanted a place that reduced total costs. So it's probably a labor intensive sector. And uh, they were then again, the costs raise profits. And it does that through expanding the, the, the business. And then you want to focus it on places where indeed they really need either new equity or loans. These are the small and medium people that the IMF tells us are, are dying in these, in these countries. Um, so I then said, this is the, would be the strategy. And then the most striking thing is, if we have enough of this, and I said, will under some conditions, and, the, that, that's, and that's the most vaguest part of this, it'll create a self-sustaining recovery. You actually do what Kay, a Keynesian kind of kick, but it coming from the private sector. Not, not from the governments which are in Europe have, you know, have, have shown they don't want to do this. So it then, you then sit and say, well, gee, how, how big, how much would I have to do? Um, 
in the U.S., I haven't done the comparison, we did the, the automobile business, but we also had a, an economy that we were stimulating. So the automobiles were not growing in a, in a world where the rest of the thing was austerity driven. And so that's not going to tell us what the right thing is. So I just said it depends on the input output links of firms. If you have a firm or a sector that is going to make, it, once it grows, it is going to start buying products, services or goods from other firms in the same country. You're now starting to stimulate growth because those other firms will then. So you, you take the input output tables and you have to trace this all through. And there's, I said there are these called backward linkages, uh, which firms that you, you, you buy from. And there are also forward linkages, which are if I get a small and medium firm, or a, any a big firm too, but I don't think they have the finance problems, the same finance problems, and it comes out with a new product that makes uh, other things in my economy more efficient, that's a forward linkage, and that's positive. That will stimulate growth. That's your innovative, your, you get an innovation coming out. There are studies of these things. They're called impact studies. And um, I'm very critical of them because they usually are people trying to sell a sports stadium and they show you, oh, look, 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 the sports stadium will do this, this, and this, um, et cetera. But we have to do it in the right way. And I think they, they can be done the right way. And then it turns out in a, a, a not, that's not a colleague of mine, but a, a, he's a colleague at MIT, Daron Asamoglu has just been looking at these input-output links as promulgating economic shocks. He's thinking of how much do these links play a role um, in, in the declines, where my, my sector gets beaten down, then I stop buying from you, and it just spreads throughout the whole economy. And, and it was thinking of like that that led the Bush administration to say, we cannot let the automobile sector go down. They didn't care particularly about you know, Ford, General Motors, uh, uh, Chrysler. Um, but they, knew, they saw the consequences for the whole Midwest of the US would have been disaster. So that's, and this is just a little table from one of Daron's, uh, not table, just the little dots are sectors. And um, the, 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 the lines are, are links from sectors. And what you see is there are some core sectors in the middle, which are really tremendously connected. So you would target, you would make special effort to give loans or equity in those sectors because they're going to kick off more growth. Uh, um, and, and, and there's a footnote, you want that done by the private sector because I'd be very uneasy with, with politicians, at least in the US, even though the Bush administration and the Obama administration, but the gun was at their head, they did some of the right things. But if the gun isn't at your head, it'll all, there'll be a lot of political hanky-pank uh, uh, about this. OK. And then I said, well, is there some role for governments in this process? They could give tax breaks um, to these investments. Um, and they give tax breaks for pension schemes. They give tax breaks for uh, ownership, share ownership schemes. Uh, it isn't out of the question of them giving some tax breaks to this. It's not part of this. If the governments want to, they can give tax benefits to when this fund gives returns. So, so that you, your pension money now has a little bit safer uh, situation because you get some positive returns, you, you, you're gonna, you'll, you'll, you'll have some, some extra things. And then I said you could have insurance. But the, the point is you could get some help from these people, but I made that my last point because I'm, I'm, the whole thing has got to work without that. If, if, if it comes, that's good. So this is my conclusion to, to this, 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 this plan. I refer to these orthodox guys as leechers because that's basically what they, they are. Uh, and the leech is you know, it's taking blood out of the body and you're sort of sitting there saying, don't you know, maybe you've got to replace it with something else? Uh, 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 they don't know this. The one positive thing I think they have done is they, since they say there are no other ideas, but there are some, eh? that's just not, not, not true. Uh, but the other ideas are not very, I can phrase it right, radical. They're not dealing with long-term things. 
They're generated largely by very uh, good economists who are thinking about how can they can man manipulate some things without changing the fundamental system. I think this opens a door, and the crisis should have opened the door to you know, major reforms in our capitalist system. Didn't, but maybe now the European austerity second crisis uh, gets that, that door open. And I compare this to what we did in the 30s and 50s. Uh, and their unions played a huge role. I think in this great, post the Great Recession, now the Euro unions have not offered really dramatic new ideas. And they've been sort of on the back foot, you know, just let's defend this. All the ideas have come from other people. And so this is an idea I hope you, you like. And so then I said, what were the next steps? If I was a, if I was a billionaire, uh, uh, um, and I, I, I don't know how many billionaires you know, I've now met three in my life. So I know three billionaires. And they think differently than we think. Because you, you come to one of these billionaires with a plan like this, and we have one in China who, God, hopefully, will be making a giant donation to Harvard University uh, for scientific and mathematical research. No, a, a giant donation, the kind of thing that you say, oh my God. Uh, I can't sell the Chinese billionaire on making a giant donation to Europe for some purposes. I, I did propose to one, my, the second Chinese billionaire, but I know two of them. I, I said, why don't you buy Greece? Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's going to be a really bargain basement thing. Uh, and that, that, didn't, that didn't sell. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but this, in some sense, is saying, hey, yeah, workers' capital can go in and buy up a lot of Greece and turn it into a positive thing with working with Greek workers. Uh, so, so, so this is kind of thing I said, next steps. If I were a billionaire, you know, I'd sign up some check and we would do this. So we need to have the social partners establish some commission to look into radical ideas of, a, of a, uh, this is sort of radical, uh, 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 figure out what the legal change is to, to operate, and, and then move to establish this. Um, uh, the, the first time I presented this was in Munich to a business group. The business people liked it. We're having another meeting with business people in, in, in Paris in the November, and they said, talk to the unions. And I said, this is, in the US, the business people would say, if I, if I t had a, a scheme that they might like, they would say, you, if the unions endorse it, it's dead. Uh, and, 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 and so here you have a different institutional structure. You really can have some discussion with your social partners. And it is meant to have both sides in this, the real economy, the people who are on the outside, are, are the governments and the banks. Uh, but, you know, somewhere there'll be a place for banks and financial institutions. I'm not, uh, uh, we're starting to go to discussion next week with Mondragon, the finance arm of Mondragon. Now, could they play role in something like this? Because it's not the same kind of bank and operation, et cetera. And then I just said the assessment should involve simulations, it should be groups, because details are very important and you want lots of different people to look at it and come up with some solutions. And then I said, if if people were buy into this. Right now, it's a small group of economists uh, the, and some social analysts trying to push this a little bit, but it needs really powerful group. So I said, is this a slam dunk? Are we selling the, are we P.T. Barnum selling you the circus and the Br Brooklyn Bridge? And I said, no, uh, but it certainly is a new idea that is worth thinking about given what the alternativeless thing is. And the IMF, when I talked to them there, they said, well, we don't, uh, I don't know about this. You know, workers owning shares and things like that, that that's, that's not the kind of capitalism we think about. And I said, well, uh, you got something better than that? And of course, while they will, they're in, they're, their policy guys are endorsing leech stuff, they know that's not gonna work. It isn't just the, uh, the American economists who, who know the stereotypes work, they know that inside those organizations. So they, they sort of said, well, you know, it's, maybe it's worth thinking about. That's fine by me. Uh, and then finally, I want to conclude with the word equity. Uh, 
in, in English, and I didn't check the French or, or German or Spanish or whatever, it's interesting to do a little paper on what it means. Inequity has two meanings. Equity is fairness, and equity also is shares. It's owning. It's owning the fruits of your own labor because you have equity in the company that is producing. It's very, I, I didn't check the history of that, why that, how that ever happened. It doesn't seem natural in some sense, unless you, you, you think about the, 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 the capitalist system as being a place where, where, in fact, fairness means that I have some stake, and a guaranteed stake. I'm not just a wage employee. I have some stake in this. And so I said, this, this is a, a way to hopefully surmount the austerity crisis and to move things, the whole system, in a different direction. And I do know there are chunks of business people who are very adamantly in favor of, the, of a share uh, plan kind of, kind of stuff. Uh, all the Silicon Valley firms in the, in the US, and I assume startups here as well, you got to have the, 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 the people sharing because it's risky. Now, to bring it to older workers and more established things is a, is, you know, a different step. And I think this, the ownership stake of the workers should be less because they have other responsibilities and so on and so forth. But to make it a part of a new vision of, 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 of the capitalist system, it seems to me that that's the, if unions would buy into this, you could just push, I think, and change a lot of the dialogue. Of, 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 the, of, the, of the dialogue back to what is workers' stake and how are they going to get their stake in this system and influence it. And so at the end, I said equity for all and uh, hooray. <laughs> and now I'm eager to hear the comments and criticism. Thank you for uh, this very uh, stimulating uh, presentation. I think that the theme you developed was a little bit different of, of what we had uh, as discussion uh, in, in the steering committee, but uh, what is uh, the good for the crisis is that open doors, uh, windows for new ideas, uh, and uh, uh, there is a lot of ideas, and some will succeed, uh, and others not. And as we know, uh, new ideas takes time, and a lot of discussion, uh, certainly. So I give uh, first the floor to uh, Bernadette for some comments and then we open uh, the general uh, discussion. Uh, it will be, we will have the translation until uh, 6 if we go a little bit further, 6 we continue in English, but uh, you will have short question after as you are now used after a long day. I hope you will appreciate how difficult it is to be uh, battling a whole day with uh, an executive committee of the ETUC on the question of an investment plan, uh, not being an economist and uh, having the heavy responsibility to give you a, a feedback. So I'm, I'm going first to assure you that I haven't understood everything. Um, the second thing I want to say is that you have indeed be provocative in the way you have presented the solutions that could be opened um, in Europe uh, to have a, a recovery plan, which you called um, Marshall, or you entitled it some sort of uh, Marshall plan. And maybe I should point out some of the um, key elements that we as ETUC have been putting forward for a recovery, and you will see that these elements are not necessarily uh, in line with what you've been saying, but I also will take the opportunity of one or two questions. For the ETUC, the key element uh, to get out of this uh, um, situation where we are is to stop austerity. That's the, the first thing. Stop austerity. What do we mean by that? We say we should stop cutting on wages, cutting on social protection, cutting on pension, so that people can continue uh, buying things and uh, we don't have the effect of um, the, the downward spiral that we, we have now. So first thing is stop austerity. Second thing is invest for good jobs. 
we've been today trying to uh, discuss what sort of investment plan we would like to have. Uh, we certainly haven't uh, reached a solution, but we certainly uh, are not in a situation to have a social partner investment plan, as you, uh, as you were indicating. Uh, but maybe we would need to be a bit more, a bit clearer about what you understood and what we understand. For us, if we speak of social partner investment plan, we would think of having a discussion with our partner at European level to try to work out such an investment plan. And quite unfortunately, I think this is not possible. I think you have underlined something which is very provocative to us, which is concession bargaining. If I understood you well, you have been saying that maybe it would be a good idea for trade unions to negotiate a cut in wages under certain circumstances to get investment in their company and then to get a return on the uh, progress made by this investment. Now, this is obviously very controversial for trade unions. There has been concession bargaining in the past for to keep jobs during the recession, but concession bargaining to get investment in a company is something that we haven't been thinking about. And to be provocative myself, uh, I, would, I would ask you, do you have any difference on this with uh, Oli Ren, who has been uh, advocating cutting wages for, uh, in order to be more competitive? Now, he's saying that as part of austerity, but our people would certainly not be, would not be able to negotiate that without being sure that they would get something out of it. And I, I think it's, it would be extremely, extremely difficult. So this trade-off uh, for wages is for us something very difficult to, um, to imagine. I would so say also, you've been uh, speaking about investment, you've been uh, mentioning a few sources of uh, money, and uh, I hope that our Norwegian colleagues were around uh, when they heard that maybe the Norwegians should be investing in, uh, in Europe for, um, for the recovery of, of uh, Europe. But we also have, as a policy um, for the ETUC, we have the view that capital should be made available by governments or by taxing the rich in order to have to support an investment plan. So what, what you've been telling us, in what you are telling us, we, I have seen, and I'm saying I, so maybe I didn't understand, but I have seen no government initiative for, uh, for investment. And we've been always uh, saying that we needed to have uh, government policy, EU policy, uh, and not only company policy for, um, for investment. And then um, in the ETUC, we are arguing that we need to invest for good jobs, I underline good jobs, and sustain in the sustainable economy. Uh, I have seen the, the graph with all the dots, and um, I wonder if all the dots are part of the sustainable economy. And I wonder how much we could hope that this investment would bring jobs. Because for us in Europe, this is the key. We need jobs, but not any job. We need good jobs. So that's, that's uh, more questions than, than answers. Uh, 
for the for the ETUC, we believe certainly, as you said, <clears throat> that what is important is to have the economy financing the uh, the finance going to the real mm. economy and that's something that we haven't managed to to get we know that in europe there are a lot of uh, cash available that that we want to attract to invest in the real economy but whether this should be done by social partners through social partners in company to uh, attract this funding is something that is um, indeed very interesting, but certainly also uh, very, uh, very controversial. But uh, we are always listening with uh, great attention and great interest to um, those ideas, because I do believe that we don't have all the solutions. If we had all the solutions, we would be out of the... Uh, the, the crisis we are, we are in. We do believe that um, social partners have a role to play in the current circumstances. Um, not sure we agree with the role you were, uh, you were um, presenting, uh, but I would uh, certainly welcome your input in the uh, process we are undertaking in the ETUC in building up a proposal for uh, an investment plan for uh, recovery and uh, for good jobs uh, in Europe on which we are currently uh, working. So thank you very much um, and I'm looking forward to the discussion.